The Polaris Scrambler dates back to 1985, when it was introduced in the form of a 250cc two-stroke powered three-wheeler. The original Scrambler had features unique to Polaris, still found on their machines today, such as fully automatic PVT transmissions, lots of suspension travel, and full floorboards. Impending government restrictions spelled doom for all three-wheelers, so the Scrambler disappeared from the Polaris lineup for a few years. In 1995, the Scrambler was resurrected in the shape of a four-wheeler, as the four-wheel drive, two-stroke powered Scrambler 400. Two years later, Polaris added the four-stroke powered Scrambler 500 to their line. These machines were two of the fastest sport 4x4 models you could buy for years. Emissions killed the Scrambler 400 years ago, but the proven and powerful 500 remained in Polaris's lineup throughout 2012. We are sad to say that a changing market has spelled the end of the venerable Scrambler 500. Today, sport 4x4 enthusiasts are trending toward the biggest and the baddest, rather than the best bang for the buck. While the 500 was once the biggest, that time has passed. Yes, the historic Scrambler 500 has gone away, but 2013 brings about the next generation of Scrambler, the awesome Scrambler XP850. So what is the Scrambler XP850? Most company Sport 4x4s are modified versions of one of their 4x4 utility models. The Sportsman XP850 is easily one of the best 4x4 utility machines on the market, making it an ideal platform from which to develop the new Scrambler XP. The transformation began by redesigning the machine's bodywork. A slightly lower profile fender design is reminiscent of the Outlaw 525 IRS. The Sportsman's racks were micro-sized for the Scrambler. Its mini racks can hold up to 50 pounds rear and 25 pounds front, allowing some cargo space for day-long trail rides and campers. A one and a quarter inch hitch receiver can tow an additional 1,500 pounds if needed. Part of the new aggressive styling is a heavy-duty front bumper, color matched to the front and rear A-arms. The Scrambler's suspension settings are unique to the machine, developed for its sport-specific intentions. A new exhaust was designed for the Scrambler to enhance engine performance while providing a sportier look and sound. The differences in power must come in delivery, as its peak power output is identical to the Sportsman's at 77 horsepower. In addition to the standard model, Polaris offers the Scrambler XP850 EPS Limited Edition model, which comes with automotive style stealth black painted bodywork. The most notable difference between the base and the LE model is the addition of electronic power steering. Box Podium X shocks are also a significant step up for the LE model, featuring piggyback nitrogen reservoirs and compression damping adjustment. Both machines use Carlisle 49.2 tires. The LE model uses black aluminum mag wheels with lip and center accents. Dual 50 watt headlights with high and low beams light up the trail on both machines although the LE model receives upgraded LED lights. The Bull Run Ranch and Private Ride Club, located in Great Falls, Montana, played host to the 2013 Polaris Press Intro. There, we had a thrilling yet brief opportunity to put the Scrambler XP850 EPS LE model to the test. The 850cc inline twin four-stroke engine is very efficient, with four valves and single overhead cams per cylinder. Acceleration out of the hole and exiting corners is exhilarating. If you think this machine has more power than you probably need for most trails, you're right. If you think its huge displacement makes it a handful in tight trails, then you're mistaken. Its fuel-injected power plant is super smooth and easily managed, never making us feel overwhelmed, even in tight technical sections. The chassis and suspension do a good job of keeping up with the performance of the engine. While wheelies are no problem, the front end is easily controlled on hole shots. The quad stays pretty flat exiting turns thanks to its rear sway bar, which makes the machine behave almost like it has a solid rear axle. Any hint of front end dive could be easily overcome by breaking the rear end loose and backing it into turns. It's very predictable on side hills, climbs, and descents. Of the power steering systems we've tested, Polaris's are our favorite at slow to intermediate speeds. However, we wish they provided a bit less assistance at high speeds, where steering feels a little overly sensitive. 
the Scrambler does a good job of going where it's pointed, with just a hint of understeer to help keep you from getting yourself into trouble by overcorrecting. With 9 inches of suspension travel up front and 10 and a quarter out back, the Scrambler floats over just about anything. The attitude of the machine barely changes as you traverse large creek rocks, where impacts with the tires are virtually undetectable to the pilot. In spite of its plushness, the suspension doesn't feel wallowy at high speeds. We managed to lightly bottom the shocks on one occasion while traversing a harsh G out at high speed, so we know we're able to make full use of the suspension travel. With the extra adjustment of the LA suspension and a little more time, it's possible we could have made the ride even better. The brakes offer good power and feel. The engine braking system is also very effective. The Scrambler is a big monster 4x4. Beginners may feel overwhelmed by its size, however the cockpit accommodates most any rider's size comfortably. Its slim midsection aids in comfort and control, adding to the sporty feel of the Scrambler. The 2013 Polaris Scrambler XP850 is one of the biggest and baddest ATVs going today. It delivers exhilarating trail performance in all conditions, with smooth power delivery and a plush ride that allow you to ride for hours in comfort. In our opinion, the newest Scrambler lives up to the legacy of the machines with which it shares its namesake. It is one serious butt-kicking ATV. For more information on the 2013 Polaris Scrambler XP850 and their full line of ATVs and side-by-sides, log on to Polaris.com.